Okay, we have two senses left and they're both the chemical senses. They work pretty hand in hand, uh, but we're gonna do them one at a time. And that is the gustatory and olfactory senses. So the gustatory sense is our sense of taste. And uh, contrary to popular belief, we don't have regions of the tongue that are uh, specialized to different taste buds. That was a theory that emerged in 1901, but has been disproven since 1974. Uh, also, keep in mind that spiciness is not a taste bud in the gustatory system. It's actually in our pain receptive system. So what is on our tongue? Although we do have more taste buds in the back, front, and sides of our tongue, the taste buds all over our tongue can elicit reactions to salty foods, such as pretzels, a sweet food with lots of sugars, sour foods that are more acidic, bitter foods that are more alkaline, such as vegetables, and umami or savory foods that include things like chicken, fish, but also a mushroom broth or soy-based foods like a miso soup. And so the taste buds are little round buds with silly at the top. You can damage your taste buds temporarily if you're eating too spicy or too sour foods, of course, um, but they do come back over time. Some people, unfortunately, are born without a sense of taste where they can't detect the saltier sweetness, and this would be called agusia. So gustatory works hand in hand with our olfactory system in our nose. The olfactory uh, nerves look very different from our taste buds, and they're these little hanging nerves. Now these are both chemical senses, so they bond with different chemical makeups. Uh, and so the olfactory sense of smell can be very individualized. And our olfactory system responds not just to things we can smell, odors, but things we don't smell most of the time, known as pheromones. So let's talk about the odors first. In terms of odors, all humans are born with preferences, and right from infancy, we tend to prefer uh, the odor or the smell of flowers and fruits, and we tend to dislike the smells of fish or feces. Uh, so this is good, this is adaptive. We also find that both with the gustatory and the olfactory sensations, we are victims to a massive amount of tolerance. That is, at birth, we are very intolerant to smells and tastes. Uh, it just takes a little bit of something sweet or a little bit of a strong smell to get a big reaction in us as babies. But as we go on and get older, it tends to take a much bigger reaction. And if you find that you're eating heavily flavored foods, let's say a lot of junk foods, a lot of salty junk food uh, that maybe is also spicy and drinking it down with sugary soft drinks, we find this tolerance gets to near sky level proportions where if you go to eat some unsalted vegetables, they, they feel quite muted and they don't taste that good. The good thing about our tolerance is it can switch back. If you start to slowly shift your diet and eat more vegetables, uh, we tend to find that you dislike things like Halloween candy or salty and sugary junk food. And so th this will switch back over time. We also find that because the gustatory and olfactory system are so linked, uh, individuals who smoke or vape, uh, they tend to get a muted reaction in their olfactory and gustatory systems too. Uh, and then when they quit smoking, they find that food that was once very muted to them becomes extremely strong and flavorful once again. So it's important to understand that these can flux. Also, there are some individuals out there that are unable to smell, uh, and so it's known that one of the creators of uh, Ben & Jerry's ice cream has a very muted sense of smell, which is why the ice creams are very flavorful to us. Uh, and so agnosmia is the idea that you cannot detect a lot of smell, or you have a, a muted or almost no sense of smell. Now, odor is not the only thing our olfactory system is picking up. It's also picking up these very subliminal pheromones. Pheromones in the insect kingdom are widespread. We know that insects release these hormone-like proteins for all kinds of things uh, to help find food, to help communicate with others. In humans, we really discuss uh, uh, sex pheromones and alarm pheromones. Alarm pheromones are released when we go into a fight or flight response. And if enough individuals go into a fight or flight response in a crowd, it can help to cause a crowded panic. Um, I know myself, if I was in a classroom setting and students are writing a midterm, I tend to uh, somehow perceive that the room is much more tense without looking at the students. It's almost as though uh, I can feel the hairs in my arms stand up straight. So that there is enough alarm pheromones going on when students are writing a test that it tends to get a reaction. In terms of sex pheromones, this is something that humans tend to release near the groinal areas or the genital areas in their body, as well as in their armpits due to sweat. 
and we can find that individuals may prefer mates based on the smell of their sweat alone uh, because of the sex pheromones in their sweat. A classic psych study had individuals sleep in brand new t-shirts without deodorant uh, and then had other participants smell the t-shirts the next day and they found that the t-shirts that were preferred um, the participants were actually preferring the smells of people they would find more attractive on other metrics as well. So sex pheromones tend to be all around us and often we tend to be unconscious of their effects. So this has been a unit four sensation of perception. Congratulations on making it at the end to this unit. Good job.